So, Yeshua cleansed the temple. Money changers, selling sheep and doves at the feast days. What, how did these tares get in that temple anyway that, that day? How did they get there? Well, you all know history. You all know, you got your Bibles. You all know that when <clears throat> they went into Babylonian captivity, Ju uh, Judah, that's the kingdom that went in after the dispersion of the ten tribe ha house of Israel, and Judah did worse because she knew what to do and didn't do it. So Yahweh put her, Judah, in captivity for, four, for 70 years in Babylon. However, most in numerical numbers, and you get it right out of the scripture, in numerical numbers it was far more of the kingdom of Judah that went into Assyrian captivity than ever went into Babylonian captivity. Far more of them. But there was 42,000 that came back out and came into Jerusalem of the house of Judah. But when they were in for 70 years, they were there, they were, their punishment for not observing the Sabbath, 70 years in Babylon, when they were there, they picked up a book. Now, I don't do this to offend anybody or say I shouldn't do it or say that this is all a bad book. They picked up the Talmud. And they didn't come back with the New Testament. They come back with the Talmud and part of the Old Testament. And that's where the Pharisees got their strange doctrines. And they were always at warfare against Yeshua with those doctrines. The Babylonian. They weren't Bible history. Now, it doesn't say there wasn't any of the Talmud that was good. There was some of it. But there's some uh, volumes of the Talmud that I wouldn't even show to my children. So, we have a mixture everywhere we go. It's a mixture. It's all mixed up and it's all, you, we, we don't know. Well, you know, your conscience has been purged. You know. It might be hard to execute what you know, but you know the truth from error. You have a whole generation behind you that taught you. Now, some of the generation now hasn't, doesn't have that backlog of generation that have taught them what is true and what isn't, so they don't know. But you have the privilege of knowing. Because your father and your mother and your grandfather and your grandmother and your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather, many of you have that heritage. And they taught you what was right. You know what's right. You don't have the power to do it, but you know what it is. If you don't have the power to do it, then you have to be baptized by Yeshua. And his baptism is a baptism of spirit and fire. Spirit and fire. That's why he didn't baptize during his day. Water baptism, because he wasn't called to do that. He had a greater baptism. And your baptism will be greater than John the Baptist or Yeshua. Your baptism will involve fire and death. His did. Yeshua's did. And he overcame it all. He walked through it. This is what <clears throat> I shared with you last feast. I put it in a book like this. This is a dictionary of Bible symbols. I just took some, and there are copies I made for you. Just what they had to say about feast days. I took them out and I copied them. And <clears throat> since I wrote in that book about what the feast of Passover was, I added my name to the list of people that wrote in this book. And you can do the same. In fact, I encourage you to do that. It's not copyrighted. Say, well, you've got to copyright your books. What for? What for? Are you trying to get a corner on the truth? And sell it? We're forbidden to do that. Right. Absolutely. You won't follow your calling if that's what you're doing. Because we've already been told not to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't bind or sell it. 
the word of Yah and do it. And so I added my name to that. I'm a commentator. I made a commentary. And this is what I said. And I said that because I already gave you this lesson last Passover. Passover today is the memorial of Yahweh passing over the land of Egypt and Goshen during Israel's Egyptian bondage. The original Passover began with Jacob Israel's family descendants. Each family that applied blood from a a lamb to the doorpost and the little resulted in the sparing of each firstborn from death. Yahweh heard Israel's cries long before Passover and spared Moses to deliver Israel from their bondage and captive slavery. Animal sacrifice was not a new thing. It was required as far back as Cain and Abel. Without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. The shedding of animal blood has always been a revolting thing to mankind, and so it was with Yahweh. But he used it to cover their sins, but when your brother Yahshua came, he destroyed sins. Well, if he destroyed sin, and we're his brother, what is our calling? <clears throat> Yahweh took no pleasure in animal sacrifice and offerings. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people in this world don't know that. And they're planning to rebuild Jerusalem and do a lot of things and reinstitute animal sacrifice, and all those kind of things. You think they're going to be successful? <clears throat> Concerning Yahshua, Scripture says, A body that was prepared for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Hebrews 9.25, 10 to 18. What was this body from, this, from the seed of the woman? Now, he referred to himself in the Gospels. Now, he didn't write the Gospels, but his disciples did. And they knew him firsthand. They knew him, just like you know your brothers. They knew him. And <clears throat> it says, that A body thou hast prepared me. What was this body from the seed of the woman? He always referred to himself as the Son of Man. He never did refer to himself as these great, beautiful words. Uh, I am the third, one of the th third person of the Trinity. And I was with God in the beginning. He never referred to himself like that at all. He referred to himself as the son of man. He was the son of Adam. But when John the, Revel John the Revelator came on, he gave us a picture we'd never seen before. He didn't wipe out any of the Gospels. It gave us a, a great big grand view of a beautiful prophecy and a beautiful story of Yeshua the only begotten Son. Only begotten Son. And so we in our picture we show that as the blue line. The Son of Man is the red line. It isn't that they conflict. They don't conflict at all. They just didn't have all the information in there. The three Gospels didn't have all the information in, but John the Revelator did. He waited till they were all done writing the Gospels and then he says, this is my submission to you. He didn't say you're wrong. He didn't say, but you know, you can't make a synoptic gospel out of John. It doesn't work. It's too much history that doesn't synchronize with the others. It's not opposed to any of them. It's just a greater revelation. A greater picture than we had. So instead of this small picture that's out of focus, and we can just barely make out what it is, now we've got a huge picture that's totally in focus, totally re in registration. We see the most beautiful picture that can be imagined. We have to almost close our eyes and say, I can't, I can't accept all that. But if our eyes are anointed, we can. So, we desperately need Yahweh's anointing. We need His baptism. And not, and not we need His baptism in water too, because this is a sign of repentance. This is repentance. This is what John said. My baptism is a, uh, repentance. We need to repent because there's things that we did that we didn't, 
we knew not to do. And there's things that we do that we shouldn't have done because we didn't know what to do. But we had the privilege of finding out. So we're still under the, the gun to do it. And so we know what he tells us. And he tells us all the time. You can go read it in your word any day of the week, any time. And it tells us where we're to, what we're to be doing. And so we'll finish off what he... I didn't quite get through this, but he... Uh, uh, I'll just reread it. Concerning Yahshua, Scripture says, A body thou hast prepared me. Hebrews 9.25 What was this body? This is the body from the seed of the woman. Psalms 40, verse 6 to 10. Yeshua's blood was changed to light at his resurrection. This resurrection-born man has come forth. Flesh, bone, and light. Now Yeshua's brethren, siblings, Daughters, siblings, would have the same hope and opportunity demonstrated by their elder brother, a being able to move through the walls and solid objects at will, and also able to ascend and descend into and out of heaven with his body of flesh. He was not a spirit. He was his body of flesh, bone, and light. Now he had a spirit. Believe me, he had his father's spirit. But he wasn't a spirit. He was a body of flesh, bone, and light. And nobody's come up for the answer to how to stop that. You know, they've got a lot of ideas, but nobody knows how to do it. They can say, well, uh, I, I change the atom, uh, explode a nuclear bomb, change the atom. Well, if you are in his purpose, in his plan, and you're working all things to the glory of your Father, when they explode that to destroy you, it will actually destroy them. It will destroy the ones that set it off. And that's what the Hebrew language is. You can take a word, you can go either way on it, it's how it's applied. And you can read Hebrew from any direction, any depth, you can read it up and down, and reverse, you can read it all those ways. But it also, the word that, they have words in there that can be taken either way. So when the enemies of Yahweh come against you, whatever, for whatever reason. Now the reason they're coming against us today is because the, re the religionists, modern religionists, do not know and understand that there is a covenant keeping people. There is a covenant in the Bible that pertains to the house of Israel, a, na a nation, and they don't know that. Now, uh, you need to tell them. However, they have to open the door. If you open the door up, they won't listen. They open up the door, they'll hear you. So ask Yahweh to open up, let them open up a door. And then you can tell them these things. And they'll say, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that we were under national disobedience to national law and therefore we're under the curse of the law. And we're in jeopardy every day as a nation by being in a, being in a society where they're not Christian anymore. America is not a Christian nation anymore. And maybe we need somebody like Abraham to show up. Father of many nations. Or maybe one of his sons to show up. Abraham's sons. Because Abraham had a lot of, he had a lot of grace and mercy. It almost looked like he had more than Yahweh. He said if we can find ten Righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah, will you say, will you spare it, Yahweh? And Yahweh said, yes, I will. To a man's request. I wonder how we compare today with Sodom and Gomorrah of old. It's almost immediate. 
a change come over people because now they got all this stuff that they can use to make things happen faster. Make things happen faster. In other words, your mind can be uh, leavened in milliseconds where 100, 200, 300 years ago it might have taken years for that to happen. Milliseconds. They will, their leavening, the leavening process, the process. Well, we need to be like the Pentecost. Pentecost, we need to have a leavening of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our leavening agent. Yes. That's our leavening agent, the Holy Spirit. Because He'll make you joyful. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit, being joyful. Being joyful, thanksgiving, praise, all those things are fruits of the Spirit. And that's a leavening process in our life. And we can leaven the outside world, but we cannot do it being apologetic and, and doing what they want you to do. You must leaven them by the Holy Spirit, and you must leaven them to Yahweh's law and His principles and His will. It's not easy. I'm not telling you this is something that you can just walk out and do. Yeshua spent 33 years working on this earth and his disciples spent a lot of time and even at the very end he still didn't understand what he was telling them. I don't know when our understanding is going to come up to his level because it took a long time for the disciples' understanding to come up to his level and most of them didn't get it, it didn't come up to his level until it already occurred. And that's what that's what our situation is today in the world. These things can occur before we're up to that level. And we don't want that to happen because we want to be joined to our brother and we want to do the works that he did and greater. So we don't want these processes to get a hold of us and take our mind over and our mind and our thoughts. We are to be in control of them. And the, uh, the Holy Spirit is being in control of this mind and that this mind will control the actions. We have to be leavened by the Holy Spirit. And you, you are the great potential. Man, we had a good lesson on the potential that John Gossip wrote about the potential. Now see, Yahweh didn't make any mistakes. He said, well, I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And he says, well, you do it like I tell you. You love your neighbor as your yourself. That doesn't mean everybody on the street. Because if you got a neighbor that's doing evil, you're not going to love that neighbor. Otherwise, you don't love Yahweh. That doesn't mean you're going to wipe him out. That means you're going to find the principle that it takes to change him, whatever it is. And it probably won't be with carnal warfare. Most of us think <coughs> we can go with carnal wa warfare, and they thought that even in his own disciples, not just, not just the twelve, but he had a lot of disciples that didn't get as far along as the twelve did, because they became the twelve apostles. And he chose them from the beginning because he knew them. And Yahweh will, change, will call you from the beginning because he knows you. And if you don't want to work with him on this program that you have in the world today, to, to leaven the world through the Holy Spirit and change it, you don't do that. He's not going to put you in some tor place of torment. He's, he's going to just basically, you're going to tell him when the time comes, you know, I need my servants. And that's right now while we live. I need my servants to act in my behalf. That's right now. That's not sometime later. That's right now. He wants somebody to act in his behalf. And what, what, what am I going to say to him if I haven't been, if I've been doing something else all the time? Might have been a good thing. Might have been an excellent thing. But I wasn't paying attention to the master what he was telling me. I wasn't paying attention. So I'm going to excuse myself. 
That's exactly what you're going to do. It's, your, it's going to be you excusing yourself. He's not going to say, Oh, thou wicked servant, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He's not going to say that. He's, you're going to say, Well, I'm not ready. Oh, well, I thought you were. We just fellowshiped all along the way and we, we shared each other's hearts. We did all this thing the Bible told us to do and you're not ready? Have you come to the wedding feast and you didn't put a you didn't put a garment on? Oh my goodness. No, I'm not ready. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I think we can work this out, but it can't be worked out right now. Maybe you need a furlough. Let's say a thousand years. Well, the, the furlough, my furlough is only one day, but yours is a thousand years. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at right now. We're not at that some point in history that's going to happen, will happen. Well, let's take, a, I'm getting away on past my time, isn't I? Yeah. So blow me away if I'm boring you. But what, what happens? What happens in, uh, you all have this, you carry this around in your Bible. I'll just read it from the book because it's all, already written here. After the Lord's day. We're in the great day of the Lord now. We're not having to wait for some specific time, but in the great day of the Lord now. <clears throat> Zechariah. A good book, Zechariah. It should come to pass that all that are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem. Well, nations have went against Jerusalem lots of times. But it wasn't called the great day of God Almighty, great day of Yahweh Almighty. But this one is that we're at now. It should come to pass that all that are left of the nations that went against Jerusalem, all of them are left. Yeah. from year to year to worship the king the lord of hosts and to celebrate the feast of tabernacles the Christians won't celebrate it so the nations will feast of tabernacles and if they don't he says I got plans for you how many of you farmers like to raise crops without rain it don't work, does it? It just don't work. That's what happens if you don't go to Feast of Tabernacles. The whole nations, the remnants that are left from this battle and this time of the great day of Yahweh Almighty. He didn't say destroy them because maybe he sent, maybe he sent uh, Joseph along somewhere in this picture. Sent Joseph along to store up some wheat somewhere so they could get by seven years of drought. Now, I hope he did. Maybe he called you to be Joseph. I'm not sure. But I know he's called all of us to do what we're to do. We don't have to argue with each other what our job is. All we got to do is do what he says. Amen. And when we do, we'll be in perfect harmony and perfect unity. And you talk about a business that's going to ex excel and a business that's going to get ahead and then you got it right there, that unity. Because you'll find out that the job that you did that day, it was probably your assignment was done correctly, but the jobs that didn't get done, a brother picked up and did that job and you don't have to do it. Because he had seen what to do, so he just went and did it. That's unity. And you can't destroy that. How can you destroy people that are so unified that they mesh they don't, they don't spend their day trying to figure out how they can get ahead. They figure out how they're trying to get their job done that Yahweh gave them to do. And we're all going to face that day. Yeah? Right. Because things are coming on this earth to change it. For the good. Right. Not going to be changed for evil or for any other purpose because He willed it to be done right. And He willed certain servants and certain uh, men to be at peace and do these things correctly and he spent he spent a long time with Moses in the desert and Egypt and then the crowning work of his life was to spend 
trying to get these boys to get shape up and get in the promised land. And they spent 33 years saying, we can't do it, Moses, you do it for us. He said, well, don't you know what you always done? He, uh, he got all this canopy, we got all this manna, we got all this water from the springs, and your shoes, you're still wearing your shoes, 38 years old, I mean years. That's a pretty good father. And they're just, they're just looking at, at, after you, babysitting you. Because you won't go in the promised land. They, they, they died out there in the wilderness. Because they lost their vision. And the bride, without help from the husband, you know, she's supposed to call him her husband. He didn't want to be a husband or a bride, whatever it was. He didn't want to be a bride and do what he yeah, asked. So, anyway, the whole feast days, so you can go from one feast to the other, do everything I've elaborated on, and everything that Yeshua has elaborated on. He got to the final day, the last great day of the feast, and uh, he want, the multitude of the people, you know what they wanted to do? They wanted him openly to declare that he was Messiah. Now he had did it without openly declaring it, and the Pharisees and the, all this group were trying to kill him. And that's why he went to Jerusalem during the feast. Because they sought his life. They were going to kill him, but they were afraid to do it. At feast, because their, their murderous heart would have been unveiled. Their murderous heart would have been unveiled and they told the people all the time, we're the ones that are doing everything right. We're not healing on the Sabbath. We're doing other things. But they came back out of Babylon, I want to tell you. They weren't, weren't reading. What, they weren't no longer teaching what the Bible says. They were teaching their own ways. That's why they were hated him. They'd have been teaching Yahweh's ways. They would have hated him. They'd known he was the son. They'd known he was doing the work of his father. Now there was a lot there that did know him because they were the ones that wanted to crown him king when he rode into Jerusalem on the foal of an ass, a donkey. And they wanted to crown him. They understood what his purpose was. And so he got a donkey to ride on. But he, he knew his, this whole thing was going to collapse in 40 years because he'd be the one to collapse it. He was given all authority and power in heaven and earth. What for? To bring this planet into perfect unity and everything, every molecule, every cell, everything back into complete perfect picture. The picture is now, uh, everything's in registration. Whatever you do that goes into that picture will be in perfect registration with what Yeshua once done. And he's not, he's not really known anymore as like Yahshua or the Son of Man. He's known as Messiah. The only begotten of his Father. And his birth date goes back farther than Bethlehem. A lot farther. And that's who we're connected with. We're connected with Yahweh and his power and his purpose and his plan. And he's not going to be defeated but if you come up to him and say, I'm not ready for this, he'll say, well, well, you take a furlough. We'll talk about this again. And somebody else will fill your place. But he'll hold your place open. That's what this whole story is about. That Gloria shared with you this morning. He'll hold your place open. Might take you a thousand years to get the thing right, but he'll hold it open. And when you do, he will be rejoiced to see you there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I had a lot more things to say, but maybe I said some of the things I had on my mind and heart. But nobody can defeat you. Say, well, I work at the place that's, that's and I worked at those places too, that they require too much work. They're, you know, they're hard to work for. They, they criticize everything I do. Well, quit working for them. Start working for Yahweh. And you'll be at the same job at the same hour. They'll, your boss will come up and say, I've never seen work like this done before. Oh, I wish I could give you a raise. 
That's how I operated my life when these principles started to come alive. I found out I didn't work for the guy that signed the paycheck. I worked for Yahweh. Amen. And the righteous principles that I proclaimed then are still coming back to me. And the same thing will happen when we get this thing right. And we have the opportunity to because hopefully, and I'm going to pray, every one of you, going to be in the first fruits. Because that's your, that's you always heart to have you in the first fruits. He'll have you there. And we can be in the first fruits. If you don't want them, you'll just say, well, furlough. We'll see you later. He's not going to throw you in some pit somewhere. Eternal torment. Because that's not you always heart and never was. Father, we thank you for your love to us and your guiding light. We thank you for Yeshua. We thank you for the opportunity we have today to lift you up in praise and thanksgiving and to say, You are our King. You are our Elohim. You are our God. You are our Almighty. And you, we cannot, with Yahshua's being our elder brother, we cannot be defeated. Thank you, Father. We praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen.